Welcome to the Overheard Podcast recorded live in Banff. Believe it or not, <laughs> under this uh, hilarious costume, I'm Dan Rudel sitting under here. We With, got, in the red is always Maddie Rage. <laughs> we look like Kitty O, man. I don't know if, if you're old enough to remember that TV show, but yeah. oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. No, I'm phone. not. <laughs> cape. Look at this cape, dude. Yeah. Let's go. How was your week, Dan? My week was pretty sick, man. Been down at the Banff Center. Um, oh, yeah. Enjoying the Film Fest. It's been pretty yeah. awesome. They're nice enough to invite us out there. It's been absolutely fantastic. We'll touch on that in a little bit, though. Um, if it's your first time joining us, please don't hesitate to give us a like and subscribe. <laughs> uh, you know I hate asking, but Never. it's how we keep bringing you these awesome, awesome episodes. The more people we can get uh, subscribed, uh, the more we'll get to do this. The more fun okay. episodes you'll have coming down. So please, and th yeah, we thank you very much if you already have. Our guest this week, we got Dave. Some know him as Sid. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the episode. Thanks for having me. Um, so if you don't know Sid, he started traveling in 2007, uh, moved to Australia for two years, then New Zealand, traveled Europe as a bartender, restaurant manager, and eventually ended up in Banff. Uh, he nice. likes to camp, he likes to disc in the summer, he's ice fishing in the winter and snowboarding, of course. Uh, started BV Beverage, a beer line service company here in the Bow Valley. Him and his partner, Nicole... Big shout out. Also just got their permanent residency. Let's go. Big congratulations nice on that. Not an easy Thank feat. You. Let's go. We'll touch on that in a bit. Um, so welcome to the show, Sid. Thanks for coming down, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me on here, guys. No Pretty doubt. Good. How's How you your been? week been? Yeah, pretty busy with the, with the company. Keeping a... Keep me out of trouble a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I'm taking the mask yeah, off. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we got, yeah. It sorry, was dude. cool for the <laughs> intro, but yeah, especially for... Uh, the hat stays. Yeah, the hats are staying. No, for no sure. I'm keeping this. So you're saying busy week? You've been working away? Yeah, yeah, getting Lake Louise Ski Hill ready for opening. They're hoping to open as soon as they get enough snow. I've got Norway nice. wants to be ready to open if Lake Louise is ready to open. And yeah, and then all the buyers, um, because there's no shoulder season anymore, they're doing no. maintenance when they can Crazy. get people to do maintenance. So Crazy. Yeah, we've got the Rose and Crown opening back up soon. They've been closed for a little bit, yeah. get some get some work done. So yeah, I saw you was that last week out in the alleyway there. You said you were just getting smoked with work. So. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. It's good been for good. you. It's been busy. Good for you, man. Yeah. Good problem to have. Yeah, yeah it's better than uh, being Denzel in the old, uh, well, I guess it's not really shoulder season. There was a few people downtown today, but it wasn't crazy. Yeah, it's, like, it's the seasons have changed. There's no yeah. like definitive shoulder season. It's just here and there. It, it might be busy yeah. like over the weekend, twice as busy as it should be. And then, yeah, Film Fest this week too. For sure. The yeah. Film Fest has definitely brought a lot of people to town. Uh, bumping into tons of people up there. It's been a great time. We want to give a big, big shout out to the Banff Center and the Banff Mountain Film Festival. Yeah. They've been showing us a great time. We've had access to films up there. Um, tons of great films going on. If you can get to the Daily Mixed or the Morning Mixed, uh, we had a chance to get to the Snow Show, which was yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You know, that's right up our alley. Yeah. <laughs> um, so go check them out. There's also online passes. So if you can't make it in person, yeah, you can watch them online. from all yeah. over the world. It's fairly cheap. You get all access at any time. You can watch them all in a row. Nice. There's over 90 films presented. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, absolutely, man. That's it. There's, uh, there's events tonight at the White Museum. Cool. It's a free event, but you have to register online. So go to the Banff Film Festival website. You can register for, I think there's two films being presented tonight. Um, yeah, fantastic stuff going on. So we got to give them a big Great. thanks. It's Great my time. first time going to the Film Fest. Same. It's yeah. Been, uh, yeah, same. It was I've cool. Done it a few times. Yeah, we, we went up there and toured around uh, when we picked up our passes, and it was uh, it's pretty sweet up there. They it, got it set up. The setting. Band Center Wicked puts setup. on a lot of stuff, and it's very seldom very expensive like for what you're getting up there. 100%. Yeah, um, yeah my first experience kind of touring the campus and getting kind of the ins and outs. Super hospitable. All the volunteers oh, yeah. have been great. Um, they set us up in this theater, and it's... Oh, ideal. the VIP theater is awesome. Yeah. yeah. The well, I, I've been yeah. going down to the like the theaters where the events are going on and kind of mingling down there and checking out the scene because they have all these pre-show parties and after parties as well. Um, so you can really make a night out of it. Still tickets available. Go down to the Banff Center website. Um, next weekend, there's tons of events yeah. going on. There's oh, yeah. The it's market. Wide. Yeah. Um, so big shout out to Banff Center for having us. Big, big Heck thank yeah. you. Looking to working forward uh, to working with them a little bit more as we move along. Sid. Yes, sir. How'd you get your name? Oh, I can't really put my finger on it. No? No? no. Well, we I did not, a little bit of digging. Not, even, not no. even if we bring out this picture? What? This here? <laughs> that, might have, that might have something to do with it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, 
it was a long time ago. I think it was probably about 15 or 16. We were watching the movie Ice Age when it had just come out on VHS. Oh, we were at God, my buddy's yeah. house and I was making fun of one of the girls. She was like, yeah, well, you look like fucking Sid. And the guy thought it was funny to introduce me as Sid. And I've been Sid in about seven countries now. So <laughs> it's easier to remember than Dave. You all know a lot of Daves. It's true. Don't know many of that guy. <laughs> well, that's easy to, to like, you get Dave so many Dave's mixed up. It's like, yeah. even, even at work, you're talking about Dave. You're like, well, one. Yeah. It's like. Just pick a Dave. Yeah, just pick a Dave, man. Yeah. Like, it's just. <laughs> Wasn't there like a Facebook group that started one time the and Dave's it was like, yeah, the yeah, Dave's Dave Dave Dave. wanted oh, to I do a meetup. The Dave started that. Really? Yeah, That's a Dave. On there. That was Ladav that started that. Yeah. Oh God, that's hilarious funny. stuff. So that's how you got the name Sid. For those that don't know, yeah, Sid from Ice Age. Chocolate oh, resemblance, God. apparently. Where are you from originally, Sid? <laughs> I'm from a small town in Ireland, um, in County Kildare. Just um, not many people know it. People two towns over don't really know it. It's called Town. Crazy. So I lived, grew up on a small farm out there, and uh, yeah. Did what every Irishman does is travel the world singing songs about going home. <laughs> <laughs> no, we yeah. yeah, fair enough. You guys do like a good song, yeah. don't you? you know, yeah, good like really homesick, tone. little homesick anthem, you know? Like, yeah, really, I think, I think really gets they, everybody um, going. I was in the other guys when uh, Will Ferrell's uh, singing it in the pub and he keeps chirping out of the conversation to sing his verse in the song. Yeah. And then back in, that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. Nice. Well, I think the Irish as a whole, like pretty great exporters of their own culture worldwide yeah. you we know got, we got I mean? too much culture for a little country so we got to share it around you know there you go <laughs> i like it i like it oh yeah. god when did you get to bath uh 2017 yeah probably sure. May. yeah nice yeah we so. touched on it a little bit you said you kind of traveled around before coming to bath yeah like i did like, like i went to australia for a couple of years did my two-year visas down there then i went to new zealand lived there for a year and then moved back, and I w- went back home to Ireland, but it was a bit of an economic crisis at the time. So I, I moved over to England, started working over there, and then made some contacts in the French Alps, and I started doing ski seasons in the French Alps. And then cool. I'd do nice. summers in, like, Scotland or down in Cornwall. So, like, Scotland, I was drinking whiskey for a summer. <laughs> Cornwall, I was surfing for a summer. And oh, then, wow. Then I went and worked on the super yachts for a summer down the Mediterranean. Oh, you did the yachts? Yeah, yeah. I nice. Were you on, uh, what's that show called? No, uh, Below Deck. Below Deck? <laughs> no, Yo, no. Dude, actually, that would have been sick. You actually, my friend Deck. Dave White, Chef Dave. Really? Yeah. Oh, uh, So I met Dave when we were doing seasons in France. Dave was... Uh, oh, that's wild. Yeah, I used to watch skier. that show because uh, an ex of mine was into it. So we used to just watch it yeah, all the right. time. Yeah. That's straight up, dude. Yeah, what yeah, else right. are you going to watch? I don't watch TV. Do you see a TV, <laughs> see a TV in here? I'm just messing with Dan, you, man. Actually, Dan came in today because I set up my DJ gear today a little different because my Xbox died and that TV was bullshit. It looks so, so different. He comes in, he goes, what was there a... Is the t- <laughs> what's, what's what is, changed here? What's different? I'm like, oh yeah, I just took a bunch <laughs> of stuff out. Oh, it was great. So uh, why Banff? What made you choose here? Um, like, well, when I was in New Zealand, I was in Queenstown, which is a similar kind of vibe, small town. You got your access to your ski hills. Yep. You got a good hospital scene. And nice. that's kind of what drew me here. And Same shit, different pile? Yeah. Nice. And uh, a bigger pile over here. So Yeah, pretty sweet yeah. pile over yeah, here yeah. for so sure. I, um, I like the outdoors and I like nature. So being cool. in a national park, a little bit of a bonus as well. So No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, I think like the hospitality background too, right? Like yeah, if you're in any type no-brainer. of hospitality yeah, work, like this yeah. is the place. Well, that's here at Whistler and I'm not Australian, so I came here. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. There's... Well, I feel like Whistler... It's a little different in the sense that it's just, so I always I always describe it as like Banff on steroids. Because yeah. like <laughs> you're on the mountain, there's like, there's no cap on building, there's more money. It's just like, yeah, it, it just seems to move to a quicker beat. Whereas Good like point. Banff, you kind of have to move, you have to yeah. travel from the town to the ski hill. It's almost like a disconnected thing. Um, so yeah, definitely different vibe. I would definitely get get you there. Yeah. And nothing wrong with a few Australians no, around, you know what I'm saying? Not, it's no. that time of the year, yo, they're Damn. coming by. I know, I had Resumes just, I had are just flying. broken up with an Australian when I was coming in, so I was like... <laughs> well, I got a question for Whistler. you today, Dan. <laughs> What's that? We're going to turn the tables here. I'm interviewing Dan today. What's up? Right. How far do you think we could fly in these capes? These capes? Yeah, pretty far, man. <laughs> they're kids' capes, but I think they'll support our weight. Yeah, kids help, have lots help. of energy, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I'd be fine. Look at that. It's like I've, a squirrel suit. I figured oh, being so close it. to Halloween, we would Halloween it up a little bit because our yeah. next week will be after Halloween. After Halloween. So right. we had a spooky one last week. 
have a spooky one this week. If you didn't check out our episode last week, we went and talked yeah, the to ghost the, walk. the ghost walk ladies. It was oh, a that. spooky time. Spooky time. Yeah. Dan great, loves though. to get spooky. He's always telling me, like, because I'm in heavy metal and shit. He's like, You're I went dark on a and date. twisted. What I, I was on a date one time and he's like, You guys gonna hang out and listen to spooky music? And he's I'm like, What? He's I mean, like, it's fair call. Fair call. I mean, you're gonna have a spooky time, you know? You're gonna have a spooky time. I think Dan's the one in his spooky times. No, not anymore. I said it before. Uh, I used to be into like a lot of true crime and stuff, but I can't do it. Like when I was boozing. Oh, yeah. I used to watch true crime all the time. Like it was like, real, yeah, it's, now it's, it's like, not really for me. I'm like, I don't need to know that's going yeah, on. Yeah, no. I'm cool with it. Yeah. I think, uh, the more you dwell on negative or bad stuff, the more you like attract it to you. So yeah. Like, I'm trying to keep it light, man. Even my music choice has changed. I'm more into like Same. light. Just smashing Jack I, Johnson now. No, like, like <laughs> Oh, Jack Johnson. I, I can't even get into that video. I've been redoing like but... the Grateful Dead and oh, just yeah, like, nice. you know, stuff yeah. that's like Oh wow. Little little yeah, yeah, it keeps little... you happy, you yeah. know? I've been yeah, doing drum like... and bass. Dude, I got that keeps I found happy. such bass a sick drum and no, it was it's it's a specific type of UK dubstep or no of uk drum and bass yeah. i found it on this video that they were going through different types of drum and bass why you're just i think it's called bass. groove or something and it's like this track it's just hot it's just like yeah. a, a good morning hype song there's lots of good drum and bass man tons People, oh send dude. me a link for it i will i, I will I, after the show i need to get sure. i need yeah. to get the decks out in real life and just drum and bass it up bro just tear some heads off or do do like the intro you can do the intro on the decks and then we can hop into it yeah mm. We'll see. We can, we can do it as an outro on this. I don't one, know if that'll all run at the same. We got a lot of stuff hooked yeah, up all true. at the same time. Dave. Maybe once we uh, re up on the setup here, but who knows? So, Dave, you mentioned a little bit earlier why you left Ireland in the first place. So there was economic recession yeah, I mean, going it's, on. It's kind of like a rite of passage for um, Irish people to to travel away and either come home or set yourself up abroad. Like me and my brother left home in two thousand and seven. We both left for Australia and both traveled Australia together and I went to New Zealand together. Um, uh, he lives in New Zealand now. Oh, cool. Um, shout out to Stephen down in Christchurch. Nice. And um, Oh, he's way down there. Oh, yeah, he's right oh, down there. He's like he's down a, near there at a circle. Yeah, he's an oh, ar shit. architect down there, you know. Oh, cool. that's sick. That renewable income, build a cool. house, earthquake knocks it down, sell them the fans again. Genius. He's on it. Genius plan. Smart, yeah. man. Sketch lab architecture. That's the guy. There you um, go. Yeah, and so we just traveled around. And yeah, when actually the year we left was when Europe kind of hit that speed bump of the economic crisis so oh yeah we didn't really uh, by the time we went back home it was like three years later and like you see everyone just working for the paycheck on friday so they can get drunk on saturday and talk about how much they hate work yeah and then uh sunday get drunk again and because they have to go back to work in a day and they're hung over from the day before and it's just kind of a vicious vicious cycle so i didn't want to get trapped back into that so um yeah just kept on moving well i think like i've been diving into this like for some reason it's been a lot of the content that i've been like listening to lately as far as pods and stuff is like people that have no purpose tend to gravitate towards that same thing like if you're in the same monotonous routine and you don't see an exit you're not moving up in the yeah, world it's you're just, not it's just you know very difficult to get ahead like ireland's not set up to be successful it's set up to live yeah um work nine to five mm -hmm. and have a mortgage for your whole life if you can get a mortgage well i don't think a lot of places are really set up for well, people compared, to be successful compared to ireland here's like a, a land of opportunities well there's so much real estate here true there's so much land here so much mm -hmm. space there's like some so much room for activities <laughs> <laughs> so much room for activities yeah, yeah so before. yeah so there's a lot more opportunity when it comes to over here I mean, the, the seasons do limit you. For sure. Eight, yeah. eight months of winter in, yeah. in some parts of Alberta, it uh, kind of shortens the seasons for growing and stuff like that. But it's, um, yeah, in Ireland, we just, we don't have enough real estate. That's why we're exporting people right. like me. So, Fair. Right. Yeah. Well, you touched on that. What about some of the cultural differences between like your small town in Ireland versus the small town in the mountains? Like, how different was that getting over here? Uh, like, I mean, you traveled a bit, yeah, so I mean, I, I'm, it I'm wasn't pretty, pretty well rounded. Like, and yeah. Irish people are very open to other cultures. It's not like we, um, some Irish people you'll find they'll travel all the way to Sydney to drink in an Irish pub, meet some Irish lads there every yeah. week. Uh, um, I, when I went to Australia, me and my brother, we didn't go to Irish pubs, we didn't smart. make friends with Irish people for sure, nothing against them. We just didn't seek them out, you know, we were kind of busy meeting other people we had yeah. german friends welsh friends we expanding had lots your of australian palette friends. you know yeah. Yeah. yeah so like we didn't travel i didn't sit on a plane for 26 hours to talk to some fella from 40 minutes down the road you know yeah so, no could talk to him at home you know yeah yeah i could shout at him from my gate 
<laughs> yeah, it's like going overseas and just asking for like a poutine. Yeah. It's like, buddy, like you're in Japan. Yeah. Don't eat poutine. Just well, it is kind of like a, experience it a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like you yeah. search for familiarity. It's kind yeah, of it's like I mean, a human coming thing, to Banff, right? It's like you got Kiwis, you got Aussies, you got yeah. English people. Like when I worked in yeah. the ski hills in France, a lot of English people, some Irish people, a lot of French people. Italian. True, yeah. But yeah, coming over here, it's like a mix of all the people that I've traveled to their their countries as well. So mm. it's not not a great culture shock on that one. Like my first time going from a small town in Ireland to Australia, I was like, yeah, it's great. I'm gonna be like Steve Irwin and run it. Spent the first four days running around looking under every rock looking for snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't find any. They found me. No problem. Uh, they found me. No problem. Yeah, oh yeah, they found me. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So, so yeah. It was a bit, that was a bit more of a culture shock here. It's like the outdoors. I, I spend a lot of time in the outdoors yeah. at home. So, yeah. Crazy. Well, uh, awesome. you mentioned earlier that you just got your PR. Yeah, well, we, so. What was, what, so this is what was that process this like? Is yeah. What, do you oh, want to okay. go from the start or let's, the middle? Hey, yeah, let's, go, honestly, yeah. let's do it from the start. Because I think that's like a story that a lot of people can really relate yeah. to. Relate to, yeah, for well, sure. Especially yeah, absolutely, in Vic, yeah. yeah. So from the start, I was. Coming to the end of my second year, because we got two years being from Ireland, mm -hmm. we got two years on our working holiday visa. So Come I was coming, I was about two months from the end of it, and I was in contact with this lawyer, shall not be named, and huh? she told me to wait uh, until closer to the end of my visa to apply for an extension and then make an application for an LMIA. But I actually waited until she told me to, and then when I contacted her, she said she was, didn't have room for me as a client. Oh, uh, and then I contacted a different lawyer and she said I'd left it too late. So then there was oh, a bit God. of a panic uh, and I ended up getting the job I was working at um, as a security guard, got them to sponsor right, me right. Um, and got a two year LMIA out of it. So that gave me two more years and it gave me points towards my um, towards my residency application as well. Oh, okay. So for those that don't know, sorry to interrupt you, what, what is the LMIA? And the LMIA is a labor market impact ass assessment. So what they do is they advertise your job and your employer has to vouch that no one can do it, interview people, have the job advertised for a certain amount of time. So you have to have a specific skill set that yeah, you're necessary. It's, it's, and that's kind of why I went into the security. I knew it was a, a high demand job uh, with a low amount of people applying for it. So it was like, uh, and I put in my hours at the security. Yeah. Oh, Definitely, yeah, dude. I remember, I remember seeing I remember you do yet. like, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was working quite a bit. I, was like, sure. I do a night shift, come home, take a nap, and then do a day shift, and then take a nap, and then do the night shift again. And during the pandemic, I was the I was working at the hospital as a oh, security right, guard right, down there. Right. Uh, I was there seven nights a week, apart from the, I had two days off because I was in a car accident and oh. I went to work after the car accident Dude, and that's when my back seized up and the nurses saw me. So they said if I came into work the next day that they'd call the cops. Oh. So I had to take the oh, next doing, day off. You're doing security. Yeah, 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 I was doing security <laughs> yeah, as my back was spasming out so I couldn't oh, even stand right. up. Yeah, I had to get a nurse yeah, to carry back my back to the up. car while I tried to get my legs working. But yeah. Damn. Yeah, we're all good now. Oh, um, I'll yeah. sort it out. Yeah, yeah. No big deal. Just yeah. walked it off. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Just walk it off. Just rub some dirt on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so and then once I got the LMIA, then I started my application uh, and I was trying to apply. But as you guys have already heard on here, a um, bit of a traveling history. So they want everywhere you've been, every flight you've taken, oh, every oh, address wow. you've lived at, every job you've had. And they want your work history to be consistent. So I had... Um, I had a bit of trouble with that, and uh, I was I was dating Nicole at the time. Shout out to Nicole, and um, yeah, it was probably about fifteen grand in, and uh, we applied, and some of the dates didn't match up, so it got rejected. So we looked into applying through Nicole, and actually, she sponsored me on a postgraduate work permit because she studied over here, so I was able to get another eighteen months on it okay. after my LMIA. Um, so, and then we looked at applying through Nicole. So Nicole went as the primary applicant on there, which was the best thing we did because Nicole came over here, um, from El Salvador and then studied. And then after her studies, she came straight to Banff and oh, started cool. working for Caribou Properties. Okay. Oh, nice. worked for Caribou Properties until we had applied. Amazing. So a much easier application. One job. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, I There had, you go. I had four in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, we applied through uh, Nicole and it took a while and we got into the pool, the main pool. And then we got drawn out by Alberta nominees. So they drew us out. 
gave us a load of points and sent us back in. So we ended up back in the pool with over a thousand points and Sick. they were drawing people at 600 points. Oh, that, um, that's good. And yeah, finally we got drawn out and yeah, we got accepted. It was January two years ago. Damn. And then yeah, you apply, you, you acknowledge you got accepted and you give them your details, make sure everything's correct Crazy. and you get your residency cards or you don't. Um, they, they send our <laughs> they residency publish. cards to, uh, so they clearly use the um, Canada Post um, oh, okay. address yeah. bar. Okay. So they typed in Banff Avenue, ignored the rest of my address. And the first Banff Avenue that pops up is in Burnaby, BC. No. So if anyone's oh, listening from Burnaby, BC, can I have my residency card? Oh, <laughs> it's oh somewhere on Banff Avenue. So you go through all that yeah. trouble of getting. And I, if you get one thing wrong on the form, they'll, they'll drop your whole application. And you have to resubmit it for another fifteen hundred bucks. Oh. Um, but yet they can send your personal details to uh, Banff Avenue Jeez. in Burnaby, BC. So you uh, never even got... though even though I was an Alberta nominee, <laughs> it's crazy how all these like governmental processes are like yeah, and so then, well, old in their ways of yeah. being handled. Right, like these yeah. things take forever. You think in this day and age, like. You know, they'd come up with a quicker Oh, and quicker when, I, way, when but... I was like, well, I haven't got it. And they were like, oh, yeah, that's because it was sent to the wrong address. And I was like, what? well, yeah, who's responsible for that? They're like, oh, you can just sign a... Um, uh, you can just sign a um, an affidavit to say you never received it. And oh, cool. then they'll issue a new one. I said, okay, cool. What's the, what's the waiting time on that? Because when you get accepted for your residency until you have your permanent residence card, you can't leave Canada unless you have uh, to apply and pay for another piece of paper to say that you can temporarily leave and come back okay, before you receive your card. <laughs> so we were held ransom here Basically, for, yeah. for like, I got mine actually on the way to stampede. Uh, I had just renewed my driving license and I went in to pick up my driving license and it wasn't my driving license. It was my residency card. Oh, cool. Nice. So it was six months later. Jesus. And a lot of phone calls. And Nicole, she only got hers like coming up on a year later. Oh man, yeah. that's it was a, yeah, it was a nightmare Ooh. to get it. But then once we got it, it was now you're good. Yeah, yeah we're good. We good. Just, oh, yeah. we just cruised through. We just went to Mexico. Nice. Walked straight back through. Beep. Well, congratulations. Oh, yeah, it was a weight lifted. There was no rubber glove this time. So any uh, <laughs> any advice you'd give to someone that's looking to go through the process? Like something that you wish you knew earlier. Or yeah, well, that, that, that was the biggest one for me. It doesn't matter who sponsors who. If you're in a relationship and you prove you're in a common law relationship, it doesn't affect your taxes or anything like that un unless you declare it. Like if you're right, right. Yeah. So, but you can be common law in the eyes of immigration and cool. whichever you has the easiest work history. Do it that or way. Or the highest points. Like Nicole nice. had a postgraduate work permit. Yeah. Nice. She was, she, her points weren't higher than mine overall because I had the LMIA as well. Mm -hmm. But when we had her and me as a secondary, it was Together. a lot easier. Oh, they and we pair had enough up. points. Yeah. Oh, cool. So cool. like my secondary points only counted for a quarter of their value. Right. But with her as the primary, we, it was easier to get through everything. So cool. if you have the option, pick the, the path of less resistance, you know? Well, that's some great advice out there. Yeah, and get a uh, lawyer. <laughs> okay, I get a lawyer. Yeah, so I got... Uh, well, you said the first one kind of oh, the kinda first fucked one, you over, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, the second one, I didn't. I left that bit out, but the do second you, one Do you think also, she maybe realized she was wrong and... She was Irish, too. I should have... Do you think she me. maybe... Oh, God. <laughs> I thought, I thought <laughs> it was true. You and I, I, it's okay. I'll tell her mother when I get home. Oh, you should have... Yeah, track her down and be like, <laughs> oh, hey, your daughter, I uh, really... Yeah, send the boys So we talked a little bit about... Uh, the hindrances in the process. Is there anyone that specifically that helped you out along yeah, the Man, way? Yeah, Manpreet at CIC. Okay. Um, they were great. They they did. A, they they will give you any level of assistance you need. They will check your documents and tell you what you cool. should change, or they will send you with post-it notes on it explaining what you should write in here amazing i had to spell your own name if you're getting confused <laughs> and and they'll submit it and they'll send you a receipt that's been submitted none of this oh yeah it was definitely submitted and then the government has no record of it um yeah. they're they're on on point yeah so big <laughs> shout out to them that was that was a great help and uh they were sick of me so they were very happy by the day they called and said <laughs> i've got some news and i'm like what the fuck is it now and she was like um is Nicole with you? I was like, no. <laughs> Why? She's like, oh, because you guys are permanent residents now. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Nice. She's like, yeah. 
goodbye. <laughs> so, don't yeah, talk, don't call us again. She was happy to hear you. the end of me there. So. <laughs> what did you guys do to celebrate? I, I, I was actually just, uh, I was at the St. James's Gate, and I just popped outside for a vape. And, I found, and Nicole was at work. She was working at the base camp at the time. Oh, cool. And I was inside with Ladav. And um, I went outside for a smoke and came back in. like Because when I found out, I hung up the phone, called Nicole right away. She just broke down crying at work. Oh, she was yeah. so happy. Like She's from El Salvador, and they don't even get working visas to come here. She oh, came and studied here. And that's the only way you can get a visa to come here. Yeah, it's got to be a tough an country. Wild. Yeah, so, <clears throat> so it's not like... Um, Irish, English, Australian, Kiwi, where you can just go online and get a visa. No, I'd say yeah. it's much higher. Not part of the, not part of the yeah. Yeah, that right? way. So, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it was, it was very difficult. And so it was a great weight lifted off her shoulders as well. I didn't realize how much I've been carrying around with the process looming over us. Oh, yeah. And 100%. then as soon as I found out, I came back in like bouncing around, had the happiest <laughs> Sid you've ever seen. Poor old Dav, he tried. He bought me a shot, but he had to tap out. He's like, he doesn't like people with that much joy. <laughs> uh, he can't handle that much happiness. Yeah, yeah. like he just, Dave nah, likes, man, Dave likes yeah. to have a quiet drink and That's sit off so to the funny. side. And I came in You would in just like, come in beep, raging. Beep, beep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like full St. Patrick's Day joy. And yeah. I was like, Babe, get your dance shoes on. We're going out tonight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> your wellies. We're going dancing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Well, congrats, man. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, it was great. And to anyone who's in the process out there, just keep with it. And if reach out, you my dan's been tagging my instagram and stuff yep. yeah so send me a message if you have any questions i can send you any details of the lawyers or any answer cool. any questions you have guys like, i'm happy awesome. to help out there was there was a few people helped me out along the way and i'm forever grateful so if i can pay it forward i will well, well, that's nice of you to offer man yeah, that's hell great yeah. Hell yeah what does your uh what does your family think about you living abroad being away for so long? i know like you know i'm even in the same well, country yeah we're all and yeah, being I'm, across I mean, the country it, yeah. from family's hard, being away, you know, it's we're still three thousand kilometers away or that's something. That's it, yeah, right? It's, like this, um, it's not yeah, like it's, we're it's, just because we're in the same country doesn't mean it we're, takes me longer yeah. to get to your house than it is yeah. from your house to my house. For yeah. sure, yeah, one hundred percent. So yeah, what is it? What, what does your family think about uh, it? I mean, my parents raised us to um, have the opportunities of not being stuck in Ireland. They wanted us to travel and see cool. the world and experience so. different cultures. We like we watch. Um, documentaries on wild Canada growing up. So the fact that I live here, they're pretty excited and they're nice. coming over next summer. Oh, nice. that'll be sweet. First yeah. time? First time coming over. Oh, yeah. That'll be um, awesome for them. And they're going, they're, they're going over actually next uh, January 9th. They're leaving Ireland and going to see my brother in New Zealand. Oh, sick. So it's, so, a, it's a big old flight down to New Zealand as well. So they were, oh, gonna, yeah. they were thinking about coming and stopping here on the way and then going to New Zealand and then stopping here on the way back. Yeah. But yeah. They're just going to do a block in each, dude. And I was like, August is probably a good time. So for sure. Yeah. Well, that'll be exciting. I yeah. love when folks come down oh, and yeah, to yeah. show them around yeah. this place. It's pretty yeah. it's pretty magical for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, that's sure. awesome. They're, they're good. Uh, they're gonna love it. So I hear you're into disc golf. Yeah, yeah. I've been known to throw a disc or two, yeah. yeah. We, we used to disc together a little yeah, bit. That yeah, was the first person to disc in Canada. Yeah. What, what's yeah. your uh, what's your favorite course? All time. All time. Um I'm I'm still really impartial to the the course down in Queenstown. You always oh, yeah. talked about the Queenstown yeah, course for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, oh, you've been playing for a whole that like long, this, yeah. except it's like this, and it, yeah, it's just it's just um, so much fun to play, but technical enough that you, it's still challenging. But you can you can make some uh, amazing shots on there, and it's just it really caters to it. So oh, nice. yeah, it's just the most fun course I've ever played while still being challenging. Like so sweet. What's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite course locally? So locally, I do. You got you got to play. You got to play sisters. Sisters. Yeah, sisters, sisters, yeah, because yeah, I can go up there and knock out two, three rounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Nordic is is a bit of a commitment, and I have to pay ninety bucks to park there every. every I'm a Nordic year. guy. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I, I know I played Nordic with you. That's probably why I don't play sure. it anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. When it takes me like five shots on the last hole, and Dan's there in three, so. Oh, <laughs> Not anymore. I've probably only played like ten. Yeah, I've, ten or I've, fifteen I've rounds off. this year. Been, the last two years, yeah. it's been a lot lower. But I, I was playing down in. Uh, Fairmont Hot Springs down at the Raven's Nest. Nice. Yeah, down at the Raven's Nest. I've heard there. the Raven's Nest Dude, is pretty it, wild. It, it's in so far the best course I've played in Canada. Like, I like the Nordic, but this one is just, you like, between two holes, you're walking, like, probably close to a kilometer down along the hoodoos to get to the next one. And then oh, you're, there's there's a valley where you're throwing, and it's it's you've got a very small window. you got to commit to completely losing your disc over this 60 foot drop yeah because <laughs> it's out of bounds and it's mando like a window of like eight feet 
So you have to go for it, or you're playing up the sidewalk. So was, which which disc are you throwing on that I hole? Saw, are you are you throwing something you're okay with losing, or are you throwing oh yeah, your I, are you throwing your baby? I I got my baby. It's my my West Side discs. <laughs> it's the the destiny. Nice. Yeah, West Side discs. I never really play West Side discs. Yeah, well, I I wasn't a big fan before. I found they were a bit heavy, but. Once I got to realize that my technique wasn't as good as my aggression, <laughs> then, he- then heavy was better for me. So, yeah. That's a good way to put it for yeah, yeah. sure. So, let's get down to business here. All right. When did you start BV Beverage? So, BV Beverage is. And what, yeah, what is it? Yeah, so BV Beverage is a, a beer line installation, cleaning, and maintenance company. And it's basically, it started since uh, July, but. Oh. There's Bow Valley Beverage Solutions, which was set up by Hendo. Big shout out. Yeah, yep. shout out to Hendo, uh, which I then went in and partnered on with him like a, about a year and a half, two years ago, and started to run that. And then by Hendo, as you can see, is taking off in the cocktail world. So he was nice. kind of stepping back away from it. So then I set up BB Beverage and absorbed or took over the operations of up, Bow Chase? Valley Beverage Solutions. What's up, Chase? Good. Yeah, so right on. So that was it. So that's yeah. how it started. You and yeah, so uh, you and Hendo, was like yeah. mentoring me through the setup process and through the operational process of it as well. <laughs> right nice. on. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that too. So Sid always had the hospitality background. We met working at uh, yeah, we were at the Elk and Horseman. Working at the Elk back in the day, we used to have a great time partying yeah, together, man. Holy jeez. Um, so congrats. Now you're cleaning beer lines, yeah, doing that whole thing. Of life, I guess, you know, right? The cycle, Working yeah. a little bit more behind the scenes now. Yeah, that's it. I'm in in the morning, generally gone before the bartender gets there, unless there's an issue to have to come in and fix that the bartender probably caused. Wow. So, yeah. yeah we that the bartender it. probably caused. Yeah, it. yeah. They keep me in business. Like, so every time <laughs> a new batch of bartenders come in, I have to clear my schedule. So for sure. Because everyone knows what they're doing. Oh yeah. Nice. Sick. Yeah. Well, um, what are the, some of the, like, you, the unique challenges that you've faced, like starting a business in the Bow Valley? Obviously, it's not the easiest place for businesses to survive. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky because, as I said, I took over the operations of an existing company that uh, Hendo had seen a niche mm-hmm. and established this other company. So he really did all the legwork. Okay, nice. Cool. <laughs> and I was lucky. I just kind of came in and I was in the right place at the right time with the right mindset. And he was just like, take it. <laughs> nice. That's so, pretty yeah. sick. Right so now. it was good. So I got very lucky on that. So if it wasn't for Hendo, I probably wouldn't uh, be. On it. I definitely wouldn't be in in this industry. Fair. And um, like I knew a bit about it before because in other countries I had done beer line cleaning for my own venues. Mm-hmm. But yep. yeah, coming over here is it is a completely different science over here. Like we do everything from the keg to the tap from install like at the moment i'm installing a new bar up the at the back side of lake louise oh crazy um so you gotta yeah. run all the lines everything yeah run oh, the lines crazy. i got uh, the glycol chillers uh fob systems everything like that yeah crazy so it, there's a lot more to it than people so, think there's like pressure so you had some training yeah. before you walked into that though yeah right? so yeah. when i started with hendo i worked with him for like two years and i'd worked with him for a bit before oh, cool. that as well just doing a little bit to have one or two days a week and then when I went full time, then yeah, there was a lot of training involved, I and yeah, imagine. and I'm still learning stuff now, and I've been cool. working at it for three years now. So, Damn. well, a little, uh, a little breaking news. We usually announce a little bit later in the episode, but uh, Hendo will be coming on next week. So I were, we had the the pleasure of working with Hendo for a little bit too. And if you're yeah. trying to learn something, especially in the hospitality business, uh, there's no better person to learn from. The guy is. I've yeah, never seen got, anyone work at such a pace. Non-stop. Yeah. 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 No, he just, he's always yeah, going. Yeah, he, like every time I see him, he's doing something different, like something crazy. I'm just yeah. like, what do you like? It's, it's just wild, man. Like his work output is like nothing I've ever seen yeah, before. It's, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, um, okay, so man. looking forward to chatting with him next um, week. How can people get in contact with you, Dave, if they're looking for your services? Oh, yeah. Just send up a, um, Beer signal into the sky. Um, there you go. <laughs> you got, you me and the boys in light? the capes will come sweeping then. <laughs> That's um, it. No, so um, they can contact me. I've got the website is uh, bbbeverage.com. Cool. Um, and yeah, I don't have any social set up at the moment because I work at seven in the morning. It's not very social hours. So yeah, I fair. feel very social online after that. <laughs> but um, they, I've also got, um, they can call me on my phone number. It's listed on the website or cool. they can send me an email. Cool. Too Very easy. Cool. So if you have any uh, issues out there with your yeah, lines, if you have, if you're in even the if you want me to business. set up a kegerator in your house, <laughs> there you oh, go. I'm, I'm your guy. 
Nice. There you go. That'd be That's sweet. true. We used to do all kinds of parties, like with tiny little keg systems, little shaft on draft systems yeah. and stuff. It yeah, was yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're looking to have parties, I'm sure they can uh, organize that for you. Or if you just want a steady yeah. flow of delicious cocktails. Oh, yeah. Floating in your house, you yeah. know what I mean? Buy a little pony keg. There's a, like there's a couple, I've got a couple of clients in Camor who have like a little fridge in a, in a dobby closet under the stairs. Oh, They've cool. got a, a line run upstairs and. You go into the pantry and you, while she's while the wife's doing the laundry, she's drinking cocktails, and while the husband's <laughs> in there putting the stuff away, he's drinking a beer. They've got two little two taps. Nice, that's so, hilarious. Yeah, so that's it's, awesome. It's, it's good. Talk right. about uh, convenience. Yeah, okay. I mean, uh, why wouldn't you? you know, I'm trying I know. to talk a few of my friends in here. Like, I got a friend who just purchased a house in town here, and there's there's plenty of room to see an Odin. There's still plenty of room. <laughs> plenty of <laughs> room for a cake. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, he's gonna like the wife's gonna love that. The steady flow of beer on, uh, on tap. We, we can put wine on the other one. Oh, there you go. There you there you go. <laughs> Anything you'd like. Anything I'd probably, you need, we can we can MacGyver it into existence. That's not a problem. <laughs> I, I probably need some of that cold brew flow in for yeah, myself. Yeah, oh, that's you know that's it. Uh, there I, you go. I don't want to ruin any surprises, but you'll have an interesting chat next week. <laughs> interesting stuff. Yes, yeah. Um, what's next for you, man? You plan on sticking around the town of Banff? You planning on what's, uh, yeah. So like this, this, as I said, that, um, BB beverage has only been in, solely in my, um, in my command since, um, July. So I'm still very new in that. And so, awesome. so yeah, once that, once that's, uh, got a year under its belt, we'll kind of, we'll be able to reassess then and see where we're at. Awesome. But, man. uh, until then, yeah, it's just kind of stay out of trouble and kind of make space for the company to grow and uh yeah see how many of my friends i can get on the payroll so there you go right there you on. go how have you adjusted to like the change in schedule obviously from doing security up all hours of the night to uh, being yeah, more of I, a yeah when early I was doing bird. security i was finishing work at seven and um but I, again I, I i do love to work so i was going to work at seven some mornings after doing a full night shift anyway yeah Crazy. so yeah, it's it doesn't really matter. I sleep when I need to sleep. My body charges in four hour blocks. So if it's two hours here, two hours there, that's four hours. That's <laughs> the body needs the to day. keep on kicking, yeah. Oh so. god. I I'd know. die. I need my beauty sleep. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, Dan <laughs> needs his <laughs> Dan needs his beauty sleep for sure. Yeah. Oh god. Right on. Well, I think it's that time, Dan. It's time for some posts, isn't it? Right. I think so. I think so, you, lads. You ever seen us do the posts? I guess you've been I've, I've been listening. listening to yeah, us I've been do listening on my, on my drives out. Well, now you get to see him firsthand. All right. Let's go. All right. What do we got here, Dan? Oh, the first one? This one's pretty crazy. I got to pull this one up because this is some dude that was complaining on Bow Valley Network or something like that. Bow Valley Network is like the spot to complain if you live in Canmore. Oh, yeah. And this one reads, oh, the yeah. town of Canmore has stated that Base Camp, the developer, has completed the infrastructure of a pool and hot tub and the permit was closed. The town of Canmore also stated that the issue... The issues shall be a civil issue between base camp and the owners. At this moment, the owners, also the taxpayers, have nowhere to ask for help. I don't know what the taxpayers have to do with this anyways, but uh, it's just funny. So this guy goes on this big rant, basically blaming the town or trying to bring the town into this. And then this reply, I, I think it's someone that works for the town. It says, yeah, here we go. This is the next one. It says... No, Frank. Oh, I just busted the name. Yeah, straight, <laughs> straight, straight drop. Um, the town has repeatedly said to you that this is a civil matter and that you are <laughs> entitled to use civil recourse if if that is something you want to do. He's a no, frequent flyer on here, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> nobody is stopping you from hiring a lawyer and dealing with your matter. As multiple people, mayor, CAO, etc., have repeatedly told you, stop trying to involve the town in your civil matter and use the proper judicial channels. <laughs> I've seen multiple emails from you on this issue and not be responding to any replies like here over social media. So, so funny. He's just getting called out being like, this guy's trying to rally the troops behind him, basically, on yeah. Bow Valley Network. Yeah. He's getting obliterated in the comments. The <laughs> next one I really like, uh, it goes... So you're a new member to this group, and if I understand correctly, you are complaining about the lack of income and paying property taxes on your investments? FYI, this is a community group where many or probably most members struggle to find a place to live or pay high rent and high mortgages. I'd love to know how many members here would sympathize with your situation. And the next one was a gif of a lady girl. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Just so, wrote him right off. Yeah, hilarious stuff. Uh, that one specifically, Bow Valley Network, if you're ever looking, like people stir the pot on there all the time. Oh, I yeah. love the oh, posts. Yeah. So like, the the posts seem like they seem legitimate. 
and then you go to the comments and you're like, oh, this guy's getting roasted. It'll oh, be yeah. Like, it's always somebody getting roasted. Yeah. So good. Like, It'll be an anonymous post. Like, someone will be like, looking for the best this in town. And then it's just the comment section is just a bunch of people oh, trashing just, each other. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. It's awesome. Not that place. This place is better. <laughs> it's like, yo, man, all these adults got to grow up, dude. Oh, Hilarious stuff. Well, Next. Halloween's coming up, buddy. Yes. Look at this one. This is uh, Pumpkins. So, well, this is a message from the town of Banff. It's cute, but. Uh, pumpkins left outdoors are wildlife attracting in Banff National Park to help pr protect this special place. Keep your pumpkins indoors and consider using an artificial pumpkin for your outdoor display. So, yeah. yeah, lots of wildlife around right now looking to forage for the fall, man. Like, to us, we think this is a no brainer for people that are just moving to Banff or Camor or Lake Louise. <laughs> keep in mind, probably don't leave your pumpkin out overnight, it's a pretty dumb, dumb move. Yeah. Um, don't feed the animals. Yeah, yeah. Just, you could even just bring it in. And then leave it out. You know, like kids are probably coming to your window or to coming to your house between a like a four hour period, if at all. Yeah. I know I live in an apartment. There's no one coming yeah, knocking on my I've door. never had a trick or treater here in ten. I years. always tell Nat, I'm like, oh, yeah. we better get some candy just in case. We don't uh, get anyone. Yeah, it's it's for me. It, yeah, <laughs> it's I did this for me. Well, yeah. It's for Dean. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it is uh, that season, so we got more deer eating more stuff. There's like caged. What is this caged? Yeah, this one's really funny. It reads. Um, Oh, you have a yummy looking winterized shrub in your yard. Too bad. Nom, nom, nom. Can't have a damn thing in this town. Friggin' tourists. First of all, these are not tourists. These are locals, man. <laughs> yeah. so, it's just poking fun at this guy who clearly like tried to winterize his shrub. Yeah. And yeah. the deers have gotten through it. Oh, uh, you kept just... it nice and warm for us. Yeah. Easy. Nice little white tail. It's circle of life. Oh, man. yeah. The comments, though, like, but he's like, first world problems. And the guy just goes, no, just bamf humor, I suspect. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, come on. Gets for... offended instantly. <laughs> like, calm down, buddy. Next one was really good on that one. It was like, um, I had a talk with the neighborhood deer in the spring to leave my flowers till mid October, <laughs> and they actually did. So that was the one that I kind of like. Yeah. That was some pretty good no, stuff. You guys don't understand. We're at a compromise here. This is good. Oh, For sure. Awesome. Um, same last year. Yeah, this one was does BAMP uh, do the BAMP still do the local spa slash pool membership thing? And then I can't read any of that. Okay, I, oh, I, 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 I got it yeah. pulled up here. So, like, I wanted to mention this because so. a lot of people don't know. Like, you can go to different hotel yeah. hot tubs and pools and stuff yeah. and just pay an entrance fee yeah. to go use the facility. So, like, as winter is coming, I know myself, I love a nice little dip in a hot tub after. Um, I'm not going to blow up my spots, but there's certain hotels you can call and see if they offer yeah. just an entrance fee to their hot tub. There's a great one on Banff Ave, oh, overlooking Banff Ave. <laughs> it's pretty wild. I don't know if you can pay to get into that one, but I've heard of people getting Ooh, in. Yeah, right. I got a guy. <laughs> I got a guy. I can so see it from my back. <laughs> this, one, this one specifically mentions the Fairmont, and the Fairmont, you can actually buy passes to go yeah, use the gym passes, and whatever. Yeah. Um, that's what I love to do on like a super, super cold day. Yeah. yeah. Go have a workout. Well, the co one comment here says they went to Fairmont Springs yesterday. They had they do have a local discount, but we had to call and book. Yeah, so you got to... It's not as it cheap depends, as it used to yeah. be. So the, the Fairmont's got a lot of conferences and stuff and big groups in it. Yeah. The they just yeah. have a gathering and then they've got a different one on this weekend. So they have large groups in house, so they can't guarantee. You <laughs> yeah, you yeah, no doubt. So call make sure up. you call and book ahead if that's something you're yeah, into. Yeah, I know you want a discount, but I can't guarantee you a spot. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're paying full price. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Oh god, this next one though. Next one's pretty wild. Um, what happened to the white cute bunnies in Canmore? So uh, <laughs> as we can all remember. Years ago, there was an infestation almost of bunnies oh, yeah, in Canada. Yeah. And I was working over there doing security. It was, it was wild. It yeah, was man. nuts. So I guess these bunnies were invasive. They were, I guess, originally they were, yeah, they were, they were pets, pets that, got, that got released or got out somehow. So I know it's cute seeing these little bunnies roaming around. Um, the comments were pretty crazy of people claiming oh, yeah. a bunch of different no, this, stuff. The first one was so good. Yeah, it's yeah, living yeah. in Camwar is too expensive, even for the bunnies they moved <laughs> out. <laughs> so the comments kept going on to read like more serious stuff that they actually had paid an extermination company yeah, they to did. come and get a whole bunch. But apparently the first company wasn't super effective. Then they hired a second extermination company to exterminate the first company. To <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and yeah. then i guess there's like some disease that came in and wiped the remainder like of them out or something yeah, yeah. so Crazy. there's like a bunch of murmurs in the comments of different hypotheses of what happened to these bunnies <laughs> um well that yeah. but yeah you don't really see them around anymore there was no i haven't seen them in a while actually yeah there was yeah, a recent I post of someone of posting one in banff 
Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forget who it was or where it someone was. Someone was saying like, is, "Was this somebody's lost bunny?" And I'm like, "That doesn't really look like a lost bunny." I was don't it know. A cat? It was no, brown it was a rabbit, <laughs> but it was like it, it just looked like a, a wild rabbit. Yeah. It didn't really look like a, a house rabbit. Uh, yeah. Well, you'd think with like the resurgence of like the Bow Valley Wolf Pack, yeah, and like, just the amount of coyotes that coyotes, you see, yeah. yeah. Um, they'd have some good snacks going on. Well, so. this one could lead to some pretty funny shit here. Um, <laughs> let's just go, Dan. Oh, this one here. Okay, here. Let me pull this up a little closer <laughs> so this? I can read it. I can just see the comments. <laughs> All right. So a big, big shout out to the original poster. Um, big, big fan of his. Post some hilarious stuff all the time. So this one says, Slurpee. Sounds like Australian slang for a BJ. And then the next comic goes, nah, that's a blowy. <laughs> and then the next comic goes, actually, it's called a gobby in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, why do you guys, why do you guys think this statement does anything but prove my point? <laughs> Nailed it. I'll tell you, as far as slang goes, the Australians they got it locked yeah, they got, down. Yeah. Oh, Is there an Australia or an Irish slang? No. 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 <laughs> A little more straightforward or a about bit more it. More Catholic, you know. Oh, that's true. I yeah. guess religion is a big. Oh, okay, uh, Dan. I I didn't even think factor. of it, but we we can't show this next slide. What do you mean? Because of what's on it. I totally forgot to blur it out. We'll just do it quickly. No, you can't. You can't. No. Well, let's just cut to the comments. So we can describe <laughs> the post. This next one was hilarious. It's term the service, and we'll get fo- we'll get smashed on that. Do one you think for so? Sure. Oh yeah, for sure. It, it, it's maybe a little too overt. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. this one, this hey, we'll post, came, I'm, I'm going to read it out. I'm going to read it out and I'm going to describe it and we can react to it because there's some hilarious comments that was on it before because I know whatever TOS, we don't want to get banned. Yeah. So this is on Overheard and Banff. Actually, an, a good old friend of mine used to work with me. Um, hope to have him on the show one day. Yeah. The original poster I, yeah. out there listening. Oh, yeah. Holla at your boy. Um, the post reads, when you leave $40 worth of product on the TP dispenser, and Chase, who's standing patiently by the door, had a great comment on that, too. So it is, uh, you know, where you get your toilet paper from in the bathroom, and it's covered in a suspicious white powder. And then, uh, the, well, the comments were great. Somebody <laughs> goes, it's called the Red Deer 25%, 7 on the machine, 18 on the TP dispenser. And then somebody else goes, and 25% purity. <laughs> so this comment is actually one of our future guests. We got it blurred because we don't want to blow the spot up too quick. But yeah, the Red Deer 25% oh my is God. hilarious. 7% yeah. tip on the machine, 18% of the bag left behind on the TP dispenser. Hilarious stuff. Um, 25% purity from uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so um, good. Yeah, purity levels probably pretty low. I wouldn't know myself. Um, it's been a long time. It's been a long yeah. time. But that's all the posts that we have this week. Yeah, we should have blurred that one out a little bit, but hey, uh, whatever. Well, Whatever. It was a little... That was a pretty... That was like a throwback. I think that post was from like 2020. Yeah, it was a while ago, yeah. Was it? Yeah. It was oh, from it was like from 2022. Somebody must have just posted on it again and like bumped yeah. it up. You know okay, interesting. Yeah, so that was a, digging in the crates. That yeah, that was a crate post. digger. There you go. Damn, dude. That's what I uh, should do. For Good eye. Some, from some DJ songs. I got to do some crate digging. So some digging in the crates a First little bit. Looking at grave diggers with these hats on. <laughs> oh, man. Grave diggers. Awesome. I went and saw Monster Jam when I was like maybe nine, ten. That, that was the bomb, dude. This is, I heard. Detroit um, or uh, Pontiac Silverdome. Someone from work who just went to like a f- one of those shows not long ago, like in Calgary, and they said grave digger is still a thing. Oh, yeah. and they're still ripping up oh, domes dude, and arenas all over the world. Crazier now, they're doing like backflips, front flips, like nose manuals. It's like insane. A hilarious stuff. Oh yeah. So next week we already kind of introduced Hendo's coming by. Yeah, let's um, go. Me and Hendo go way back. I worked under him for a long time. Um, learned a ton from him as far as beverages, as far as cocktail bartending, and just yeah, being okay. a a good service industry worker because it's not as easy as you might think. There's a lot of hidden qualities that one would Absolutely. need to uh, to thrive and be successful in this business. Okay. It's not for the for the faint heart. A lot of the trade. A few things about Hendo. Um, I would consider him personally the guy behind the explosion of the shaft. Yeah, revolutionized how that cocktail is being enjoyed. Okay. Um, hopefully, we'll dive a little bit into the history of that with him because yeah. I think he would probably know more. That's than another I do famous about that. Bow Valley cocktail. Yeah, he's a man yeah. of many hats. Does. Uh, the El Palomas is by Hendo. He does a bunch of canned cocktails. Has moved from behind the bar to cocktails that you can uh, 
He's still gets behind the bar every chance he gets. Yeah, yeah for you sure. Know I can goes. only imagine. Um, but yeah, he's been in the Bow Valley food and beverage industry for a long, long time, since long before we came to town, and has made quite a name for himself. So we're very excited to sit down with him next week okay. and uh, dive into that a little bit. Uh, it's your first time joining us. Please give us that like and subscribe. You know we hate asking. We really appreciate when you're doing it. Yeah, smash that bell. You'll know when the live premieres go up. Absolutely. Uh, they get uploaded pretty quick after every episode. For sure. So hit that bell. You'll know when that goes up. Send us a subscribe so we can keep doing these episodes for y'all. And uh, yeah, just like every other week, Dan. See you, see next, you next Tuesday. Tuesday. You know what that spells. <laughs> 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 <laughs>